15 mornings. We're glad you're here. I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. And I'm Nick Saletti. The election results still coming in. It's our big story this morning as we track the big races from the local to national level. We begin right now with the more high profile races across Arizona. And of course, no race getting more attention than the contest for governor right here in our state. This morning, Katie Hobbs appears to be ahead of Cary Lake. Right now, as we do take a closer look at the numbers, and this is with 90, uh, uh, pre excuse me, precincts reporting at 90%. We have Katie Hobbs with 51% of the vote and Carrie Lake at 49%. Okay, let's get to the race right now for U.S. Senate. This is between incumbent Democrat Mark Kelly and Republican Blake Masters right now. You can see Kelly with about 52% of the vote compared to Blake Masters, 46%. Uh, it's a comfortable lead, but again, it is still very early, so it's still anybody's ricks. And in the race for Secretary of State, we have Democrat Adrian Fontes and the Republican candidate Mark Fincham. And so far, as we take a look at these numbers, Fincham with 47% of that vote. Adrian Fontes right now has 53%. And then we have to talk about the Attorney General's race as well. This is between Democrat Chris Mays and Republican Abe Hamaday right now. This one, razor thin. Chris Mays with a slight lead, 51% over Abe Hamaday. Here in Arizona, the ballot counting did take a break overnight about two and a half hours ago or so. The counting will begin again, though, here in Maricopa County around 7 a.m. And our ABC 15 cameras were rolling as early ballots arrived at the Maricopa County Tabulation Center. All of this, after the polls closed last night at 7, the ballots are actually sorted, and they're going to go through the signature verification process first thing this morning before more counting gets underway again. And Election Day wasn't as Smooth as planned, long lines forming early at voting centers. Maricopa County even tried to extend the voting time. And because of this, we know many of you may wonder how all of this played out. Our Nohelani Grab joins us live. She is outside the Maricopa County Elections Department. Good morning, Nick and Kaylee. So first, I want to set the scene for you here at election headquarters for Maricopa County. The building itself surrounded by several layers of barriers. Even to get into the building, you have to be buzzed in. So this place is as secure as they can possibly get it. Now, we can tell you that within the last two hours, the elections department reporting that about 90% of precincts reporting. But again, the actual tabulations pick back up later this morning. Morning. But in the meantime, less than 24 hours ago, as you mentioned, Nick, things were less than smooth when it came to day of voting. While the majority of Arizonans, of course, vote by mail, a couple hundred thousand do still wait to cast that ballot in person on election day. We had Air 15 up and we could see long lines at several voting locations across the valley and people were reporting issues with voting machines as well at some of those sites. One of the main complaints is that machines weren't accepting ballots at some of the sites. Now there are 223 polling locations within Maricopa County. The county supervisor Bill Gates says that about 20% of those were having problems. So he did apologize for the problems that happened, but he did stress that every vote will be counted when all is said and done. And he just doesn't want to see a fiasco like we saw in the days, weeks, and then months following the 2020 election. If they're going to come here to create disruptions, uh, I think Sheriff Pinzone has been very clear about it. They're welcome, but we would ask that they, they handle themselves in a professional, civil way. That's the way we handle things in Maricopa County. Problem is, we've had a lot of people from outside of Maricopa County trying to tell us how to handle things, trying to tell us how we run elections, and I think we know how to do that. Now, again, he did stress no voter was turned away. Also, as for that lawsuit that was filed by the Republican National Committee asking that the voter de deadline be extended, a judge ruling against that, ultimately saying that procedures were in place and they were followed. So they turned that down. Again, counting of ballots verification process picks back up at seven o'clock this morning but we're not expecting the next dump of numbers until later this evening but of course we're going to keep you covered in all of the hours in between back to you guys
Yeah, the eyes of the nation, you know, on that one, no hate. Voters at Anthem leaving polling places frustrated after facing a number of issues and long lines. Some people telling us it took as long as three hours before they were finally able to head home. Some of the longest lines we spotted were at the outlets there, that polling location that was set up. Some people also telling ABC 15 the tabulation machines struggled to scan their ballots. Again, election officials blaming a printing error for this one. Some expressed concern. Others telling us uh, there's not really a whole lot that bothered them about this. So we're hearing really from both sides. We ran it through a couple of times and he was taking it and he was flipping it both ways. And then by the sixth time, it finally took. Do you trust the process? Um, I, I trust in the process and I trust in the individuals that we that we put in place to uh, to take care of it. And I mean, there's a lot of great volunteers that, you know, put, put a lot of time into it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just part of the process. And you just have to trust the process is going to work and, you know, and make your voice heard. Our newsroom is certainly getting a lot of questions about this. Now at the outlets at the Anthem polling place, the final ballot was cast just after 9 p.m. Find the latest results on our website and our app. They're constantly being updated as more and more Arizona counties submit their data. It's all on ABC15.com and the free ABC15 mobile app. They're also updating on the bottom of your screen. Well, let's talk about the because we've got a storm system that's heading our way. It's going to send a cold front in today. Right now, Desert Doppler radar showing you dry conditions in the valley, but that's not the case elsewhere. We already have rain and snow in our state. It's in northwest Arizona primarily, and you'll notice primarily across Mojave County is where we're seeing the bulk of the impacts right now. As you're heading out the door, that means you in Kingman. You've got some light showers moving through, a few spotty showers through Lake Havasu City as well. Those showers will spread to the east, eventually moving into Coconino County, spots like Williams and Seligman and and eventually Flagstaff too, with that snow level dropping to about 5,500 feet. But spots like Flagstaff getting accumulating snow today. For the valley, dry as you drive into work early this morning. But then as the morning continues and as we approach midday, those rain chances are going up. That cold front will also bring a big drop in temperatures. Let me just show you the hour by hour breakdown. We're not going to get out of the 60s today. That's it. Grab that sweater, maybe the umbrella. We'll talk more about future casts and when the storm is out of here in that full forecast still ahead. Okay, Iris, thank you for that. 438, while several Democratic incumbents are holding on to their seats, it appears control of Congress still hangs in the balance this morning. Plus, WNBA star Brittany Griner moved to the place where she is set to serve the rest of her prison sentence. Why the White House is urging Russia to change that plan.